Hi, Robert here with uh, Mantic Mid-Month Battle Report. Uh, this is Warpath the, uh, I've been playing. And uh, I know it's the first, well actually the first Mid-Month moment, uh, which I will explain the reasons for uh, in the next episode. But it's actually, um, even though it's the first Warpath Battle Report, uh, it's actually a little bit of a special one because this is the one I played on April Fool's Day. Because of that, we had a few special rules, one of which was a secret rule that uh, only I knew and was implemented later. The adjusted rules were that, as per usual, all, all my battles tend to have uh, the nerve rule slightly adjusted so that instead of rolling two dice, you roll one dice and add two, which removes the ability to get essentially insane courage or, or to automatically be suppressed on double sixes. But what it also does is prevent uh, a unit from being destroyed from simply taking two damage and prevent the unit from sticking around, uh, well, when it's taken quite a lot because you're getting a minimum of plus three, uh, essentially. So um, we find it works better some people might not agree, but it really, I don't enjoy Warpath games without that rule. The other um, rule was, at the center of the board you have a tower, which underneath has a bunker. The bunker is the entire objective of the game. Obviously, it's not a secret bunker, um, but it the story is that the objective is a secret bunker in all, under an old tower. It, everyone finds out about it at once, everyone wants it. So uh, this is supposed to be a very fast paced game. So you get 100 points if you capture the objective in your, per, in your turn. And you get 100 points if you hold the objective at the start of one of your turns. So potentially 200 points if you can actually capture and hold it. Then at the end of the game, whoever holds it on the very last turn gets a bonus 200 points on top of that. There is no other points involved in the game. It is all about the bunker. So we took turns setting up. As you can see on the far left, probably the hardest to make out army, is a, a marauder orc army. Uh, on the top we have uh, forge fathers, which are being represented with space marines. On the far upper right we have corporation and they are being represented by imperial guardsmen obviously and in the bottom right we have vermin which are being represented by a mix of uh, traditional skaven and space skaven that i've made over the past few years on top of that you'll see a few units down near the bottom i'll come to those in a later picture let's see the individual armies so starting with forge fathers uh, we have, um, unfortunately, <laughs> most people wanted to set things really clumped up so that they could get in quickly and as close as possible. But on the left, you can see a mostly painted unit, which is a standard steel warrior unit with no special weapons. And to the right of that, the um, very inconsistently painted or not painted unit of, spa of 10 sp Space Marines is a Brocker unit with... If you can see in the upper right of that unit, there is uh, a guy with a big red power claw, and that is a special melee weapon. Uh, between the two units, you can see a light drakkar with a heavy, uh, a heat cannon, and you can see uh, a forge father with basically every upgrade. Um, this is a forge father hearse girl with the force dome upgrade and the increased firepower, so he's six dice. So a lot of points in that guy. And then on the far upper right of the big mash of units, there is a Jotun uh, heavy hailstorm cannon, which has been represented by an individual Marine with a giant gun. Here we have the corporation. We have a standard 20 man unit. Behind that, you see a big uh, white banner, which is essentially the commander because really, all they do is leadership. And then to the right of that, you have a flame tank with two flamers sticking out of it. And of course, that's not all of the points. You have right 
hidden in the building just inside their deployment zone, a sniper and a heavy weapon unit with a light laser cannon. And the sniper set up there because everyone forgot that he could set up somewhere else. So he ended up moving on his first turn, which was a waste of time. Uh, the Marauders, uh, in the front, we have three uh, orc knobs. <sighs> um, they're uh, representing stunt bots. Uh, the, the main mass of units is basically one unit of 20 grunts, nothing really special there, and then a captain and the captain does not have a special melee weapon despite evidence to the contrary so all very basic and then we have the vermin and we have a 20 strong ravenous horde which has been represented by rats and a couple of pack masters okay we have a single shredder uh, behind them which has been represented by the rat ogre and then a knight spawn who does not have a combat drill, he has no upgrades, and that's been represented by the half vermin, half space marine model there. Um, so obviously that's not everything in all of the armies. The marauders also have a uh, flyer, which has four machine guns. The vermin have a unit of 20 night crawlers and obviously they have two chem throwers which come for free and they are all mounted up in a driller crawler so both the driller but all of these units are essentially going to be coming on later in the game so moving on to uh turn one the forge fathers were uh got the highest role and they had the choice of going first last or passing the decision they chose to go last hoping to hold the um the bunker at the end of the game so we have the corporation move up quite quickly they don't really get much shots off unfortunately their their sniper and their heavy weapon had to move up as well so everything moved then exactly the same with the vermin and uh, as they went second and if you can just see in the upper right corner the corporation heavy weapon is poking out of that window so that he can see pretty much the entire battlefield at the moment so moving on to um, turn one for the marauders they again just run up their um, three stunt bots only have heavy flamers uh, sorry flamers so they're not really doing much until they get in close and the forge fathers just move up as well getting a few shots onto the corporation troop that had already moved up and that is it for turn one turn two the corporation uh, kind of needed to decide whether to go to, for the center or hold back but um they're in the forge father fire arc so not really anything good going for them so the sniper goes for my shredder shredder as you can see uh they want to keep their tank alive and they're trying to keep him away from uh them oh yeah i should have said i'm i'm playing the vermin here um other than other than that their shooting is pretty even between the ravenous horde and the forge father brockers and quite a lot of damage as you can see i i took eight points of damage and the brockers took four just from the flame tank so moving on to my turn uh i decide to just go for it and try and hold the objective now, the problem here is that the secret special rule is that once you reach that tower and once you go inside, it explodes. And even though I knew this, and I was the only one to know this, it was April Fools, we knew there was going to be some silly things going on, so I walked right into my own trap. Yay, April Fool! Um, so, I move into contact with the tower. Uh, the rule comes into effect and um, the tower blows up and essentially it's napalm. Every unit within 12 inches gets hit with a flame or 5 weapon but every unit within 6 inches gets hit with a flame or 10. And um, yeah, so 
we got three damage on the on the Lytra car. We got three damage on the Brockers, three damage on the Steel Warriors. We got one damage on the Marauder Grunts, six damage on the Ravenous Horde, one on the Night Spawn, two on the Shredder, and the Vermin still get the 100 points, but at what cost? Well, they lose their Ravenous Horde and their Shredder. So essentially, I get 100 points, but I am kind of out of the game until my Driller Crawler turns up. So, uh, Marauders, they just move straight up. Uh, the aircraft comes on and does a fair bit of damage to the Corporation Marines. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, they were also damaged by the uh, Flamer, of course. Um, whereas the Flame Tank was immune. The Mercenary Capt Captain and the Grunts get a point on the Lytra car total. But, and they didn't rush in because... Uh, they're going to get in next turn no matter how much they move this turn. Turn 2 on the Forge Fathers, the Brockers move up and uh, everyone else just moves so that they can continue shooting. Uh, they manage to suppress the Corporation Marines just using the Heavy Hailstorm Cannon and with their other shooting they fail to suppress the Marauder Grunts. So this is just an overview of turn three at the very beginning we have um the commander from the corporation just move up anyway the flame tank moving to protect him so and then we move on to his shooting and he puts a fair bit of shooting on the marauders but even more on the light Tracar tank he really wants to just take that out uh he's just Focusing on keeping his tank alive, even though the tank cannot hold the objective. Um, and as you can see, if you move forward, uh, I basically just moved back with my turn, so I didn't even bother including a picture and right on to the Marauder's turn. So on the Marauder turn 3, uh, the Marauders just move up, and the rest of his army takes out the Brockers. So uh, they now pretty much uncontested have the middle of the board. Well, let's see if they can hold it. The Forge Fathers do incredible shooting. They take out both the Corporation Marines and all of the Marauder Grunts. And that's pretty much their turn, but they do not move up at all. And their Lytra car is suppressed so they can't do anything about the flame tank right up in their face. So, Corporation player, a little bit pissed at this point. Uh, he got his commander onto the bunker so because he, he needed the points, so that's 100 for him. And to be honest, I probably should have done that with my night crawler, but anyway. Um, everything else, the Kachuta, the Forge Fathers did so. I mean, they, they've just lost so much and exclusively from the Forge Fathers because I've done nothing to the Corporation at this point. So... They fire everything in and they wipe out the Drakkar and suppress his only remaining unit of uh, Steel Warriors. Uh, he also managed to pop a damage counter onto the Marauder Captain with his sniper, but that's only because he literally couldn't see anything else. My turn, uh, I failed again, even though it's turn four, I failed to get my Driller Crawler, so I just decide I'm going to go for it, I'm going to bring my leader up and try and get another 100 points. The Marauders on their turn move right up, are not close enough to charge unfortunately for them, but they move right up, hold the objective and uh, of course the aircraft is back. Um, now we had a rule that you had to actually capture the objective, so in this situation the Marauders have not yet captured the objective since the commander is still alive. So the flyer uh, is set to shoot the commander so that the captain can net the points. And of course, the commander dies when he when he comes in. So they get the 100 points. And 
They're hoping that the Forge Father and the Corporation will be too busy with each other considering last turn. We move on to the Forge Fathers. The heavy Hailstorm cannon hits the flame tank on threes because, you know, it's really their only target. And it hits with almost everything. Like, almost every single shot hits. And they don't get a single six to damage the side armor. Which kind of sucks for them and for me, to be honest. Um... So the entirety of their turn is just one damage on the stunt bots, and I think they're really regretting not moving up. Corporation turn five. Essentially, things are getting pretty close here, you know. Game's starting to wrap up, so they decide to move their sniper out of the building because he was just not doing the damage he was hoping for. And um, apart from that, he still fired some shots at the Forge Father troopers. Don't really know why. Uh... They actually almost did die from this, but the reroll from the Hearthgirl's inspiring ability let them live, but they were suppressed. So I think the Forge Fathers are out of, get, out of the game at this point. Um, Marauders only took a few damage on their leader. That's about it. So, my turn. Look what happens. The Driller Crawler actually turns up. So I'm really happy about this. Uh, I actually managed to do a fair bit of damage uh, to the stunt bots when I come up and uh, of course since I have flamers all around I get to fire them at the um, captain of course they're not going to damage the stunt bots because they're defense 7 and I probably should have used the last flamer to do something about the forge father uh, steel warrior troops or something but I decided to go to her skull and a little bit of damage on that but no real effect um, and of course I cannot yet deploy my troops so I can't support my vermin leader yet because you cannot deploy when you have moved and coming out of the ground counts as a maneuver and I have managed to net another 100 points with my vermin commander just running as fast as he can onto the objective moving on to marauders turn uh, well, they only have the stunt bots, and I managed to stun them when I came out, so that's that's their turn. Yay. I I was popular. Um, Forge Fathers uh, charged in, kill, killed my Vermin character. I didn't even think they were in range of him, but that's that. They uh, managed to stun my, my driller, which I, I was pretty surprised at. As I believe that was entirely from the Hearst Carl. They've netted their 100 points. They've made my vehicle not effective next turn. All this kind of stuff. So, falling apart for me, really. And the Forge Fathers might even make a comeback out of all this. So, moving on to turn 6. Uh, corporation, as per usual, target the Forge Fathers. So, he ran a sniper up. And he rammed the tank into the Forge Father troops and then realized he could just keep going and charge into the driller. And I'm thinking, fine, go ahead. I have like, what, crushing strength six? Let me check that. Yeah, I have crushing strength six. And he has crushing strength two. He's, he's going to die. So he ends up killing the Steel Warriors. <laughs> he charges up. I get one wound on his tank and he gets enough to kill me my driller is out of the game he I, I don't know how thankfully of course um apart from a bit of damage that means I get my vermin troops but um couldn't believe it I am now in a much worse position because I need to get on that objective this turn uh, Obviously my guys survived, but they managed to take four points of damage just from that. So, going into my turn, I'm like, well, I don't get any of my fire support that I was expecting for this last turn. But I'm still in with a chance. I just have enough room to charge, well, we, we agreed that I just have enough room to charge between the flamer tank and the stunned stunt bots. And um, that's because there's just two inches space there. I don't really know if that's right so if anyone knows the actual rules to that please let me know 
but I needed to charge that sniper or I was out of the game. So I charge in um, the, the, and I think I've got this in the bag. Sniper does not stand up to anything in combat. I've got a lot of attacks, not great attacks, but I've got a huge number. And all I do is stun him and according to the rules you must move one inch back and the only space for me to go was off the objective so he's held the objective and I've lost it so um, I don't get a hundred points for capturing it this turn and it's possible that the sniper will be holding it at the end of the game so sucks to be me moving on to the marauders turn the stunt bots are stunned again um, and the aircraft is really all he can do so he lands it down and he's got four machine guns and corporation sniper is gone so now it's potentially anyone's game so moving on to the forge father turn all they really have left is the hearse girl and unfortunately he cannot get around that flame tank so his only chance is to destroy the flame tank so he charges in and realizes that he bought a gun upgrade and not a combat upgrade and that he can't kill it what he was hoping to do was to kill it and get a d6 movement after destroying something and then be able to move on to the objective but no dice last turn of the game that that's it unfortunately so at the end of the game these are all the troops that are left alive um for the marauders they they have a lot of points left alive not that it matters um the forge fathers and the corp have and i have very little but um the corporation managed to hit the objective twice they got 200 points i got 200 points as well for hitting the objective twice once with my leader and the marauders did the same thing as me 200 points forge fathers only hit the objective once that time they charged my vermin knight spawn off and uh yeah, so there's no winners on the April Fool's uh, battle report. There's just one loser. So, I wouldn't say necessarily disappointing. Very interesting game. I think I might have to stop relying on driller crawlers and I need to find a way to either do a proper two-pronged assault or really, at, which, which I would need to save for bigger battles, or I'm just getting rid of driller crawler because it's not, it's not helping me. Okay, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the battle report, and if you have any comments, or if I did, if we did anything wrong, uh, let us know, and hopefully I'll have one of these again soon.